Um, I'm just going to share my story a little bit. Since you don't have a long time around that, I'm trying to do that. Is she around that? Which one gives her? Okay. I'm going to say this in Kinyarwanda because, because, because I'll try to mix. I'll try to mix. Because a lot of people who listen to us just speak Kinyarwanda. And um, you know, when I started music, I was in Rwanda. And my vision was to just do Kinyarwanda and music in Kinyarwanda. So when I came to the US, I didn't know how big the world was. So I said maybe I should change my vision to reach out to the whole world. But I was doing uh, that with the wrong intention. You know, living a life without God is to fool yourself. Um, I grew up in church like most of you know. I sang in a choir. And they say my voice was beautiful so I could do more with that. I went outside of the church. I went outside of the church. And I started singing and I met Bani and I got famous. You know, sometimes when you're looking for something, you finally find it. At that time, you might understand that that's not what you needed. And I'm going to show you what you need. So we are looking after. We are running after money. I'm looking after my school. Some are planning to finish their studies. I'm looking after my school. Some are planning to finish their studies. I'm looking after my school. Some are planning to finish their studies. I'm looking after my school. But every time you reach the goal, you get the cool you're going to get. You're only one more. And at some point in my life, I was wondering, what am I looking for in life? Because everything I wanted, I was, I was seeing it. Um, and it was easy. I was making money easily. People said, love me. I, you know, when you go in a big, in a big crowd. And people are singing your name. You might feel something about it. But there's also a personal life that nobody knows. Some people manage to, to suffocate that life and fake everything. They manage to, to pretend. But it really takes the grace of God to come out of that. I was in my room in Texas. I had a uh, I had different conferences all over the world. I even went back home. Everything was good. But suddenly something hit me out of nowhere. I just realized that everything I was looking for, I got it. But my heart was just racing all the time. People say I was uh, romantic and because of love songs. But the craziest thing about love songs the ones that are singing the songs are not automatically or they're not romantic. I had a girlfriend at the time. And she's my wife now. And she was very nice. Our relationship was weird. Because people assume somehow 
was romantic. But the truth was, I was selfish. You see, in a relationship, you might say you're in love, but if it only takes a little bit of frustration, you realize you're not in love. So that kind of love is fake. I don't care how much you think you love. It's just, it takes one person to make you mad, you know. So that kind of love is centered in selfishness. So when I met my wife, I tricked her into me being a cool, a cool guy and you know, romantic and all that. She didn't even know I was famous in my country, you know. I She didn't know that. She didn't know that. So when she got to know it, she realized it was a problem. You know, if you go to a concert, and you have a wife and she sees that every girl is looking for you it can make you very insecure so we started having weird relationships like in a way that it was she was supposed to be doing something then I'm happy if she doesn't do it I'm not happy we had so much so many fights Unnecessary fights. And in the middle of everything, I was getting lost. I was lost. Somehow. So, so I was having an issue with my girlfriend at the time. I was confused. I didn't know where I was going with life. I didn't know where I was going with life. So things started getting really, really bad. Some of the things she didn't even know. Because of being famous, I, I learned a way to, to keep everything for, you know, on, on me and for myself. Nobody knew anything about me. A lot of famous people, that's what they struggle with. Some of them are famous and they don't know what they're doing. But I can ignore it. So that thing happened to me too. I was in Belgium one day in Brussels. I had a concert. The whole thing was packed. We had a great concert. I went back in my room. I never felt so empty in my life. What I'm talking about, you might not relate. But I pray to God that you are convinced. You know, people who will go to hell are convinced. It's not because they didn't, they didn't hear these things. It's because they didn't believe it. Have you ever had a, a close, maybe like your mom or your father or your sister who passed away? Sometimes it's not something you thought about that they would go, you know? But when they go, you're almost shocked. So the question is like, did you think they were going to live forever? The difference is because you just don't believe it. You don't know. Your heart is not convicted about those things. Unless the, the reality of God is deep in your heart, you keep forcing these things. But you don't have to hit rock bottom for you to change your mind. Some people receive it, some people don't. 
And it's okay. There's no way in the Bible. Uh, the Bible. There's no way the Bible says we will all go to heaven. There's no way that says that. Do you know that word? Like we will all go to heaven. And it's not to say that we should do this so we can go to heaven. You know, we are saved so, can, so heaven can come into us. Some of us, heaven has started already. When we take off from this place, it will be just like a continuation. So, some people, they say they're Christians. But they don't believe it. Are you surprised? Because every time when somebody dies, they say he went to heaven. That statement always bothered me. You can't live with an assumption, you know? You can't just assume your whole life. And for me, I don't, I'm, like, I'm the kind of person that don't, I don't settle with assumptions. Either I know it or I don't. But I don't want to live in uncertainty. You know? A lot of religions, they promise heaven. They, they even tell them, you have to do this and do this to, be, to go to heaven. But there's only one person the promised that you can know you can go to heaven today. You don't have to wait to die. I think that's better, you know. I'd rather believe somebody that says that they know than believe somebody who says, I might or I might not. There's only one person in this whole universe that claimed I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one person. There's no madman that even said that. I, I do, I do understand. a lot of readings, by the way. Over here. Since long ago. Yes, I wanted to know the truth about life. Because I didn't want to be wrong, you know. What's the point of having everything and have everybody applaud you, but yet you are losing. And to one of you have that at the end, you know? I grew up um, in a lot of Michael Jackson. I grew up loving Michael Jackson. When he died, I was young. I mean, you have to be stupid to ignore everything that happened. The guy was having a blast. At some point, he, he had a good time, let's say. He had an amazing concert. People, people were fainting. Well, I've seen people fainting in my concert. Can you believe it? I did. I'm serious. And I was confused. <laughs> I said, I'm sure this is not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Must be something else. Everything was completely a confusion in my heart. I saw people crying, crying with tears. I said, What do they see that I don't see? But you see, this is what happens. Our minds are programmed. And it starts when we are young. We create passions in our hearts. We think a certain way. And somehow those things start controlling us. And something manifests in your body. And you say this is real. It's not real. You know, America is almost falling apart right now. There's so much confusion going on. Some people don't even know who they are anymore. But do you know why? They lost the standard of truth. When you lose truth, 
Utakaje kuri is so making your own truth. Utangira kwemera kuri. So some people are so convinced about something. Hari abantu bazi ko bazi ibintu runaka. And it has nothing to do with the truth. Kandi bitajanye no kuri runaka. They are true. No kuri kwa bimbi. But let me tell you something. Ariko ikamba abwiye, truth is an absolute. Ukuri ntabwo uhinduka. Truth is a straight line. No kuri ntabwo uhinduka. A truth is a person. Kandi ukuri ni umuntu. Truth came here on earth at some point. Kuri kwaje hano ku isi. And he proclaimed that it was truth. He said he was the way. And the life. So how can you ignore all those things? And leave on assumptions. Let me talk to you about purpose. When I was young, I wanted to know where I was supposed to do at every step of my life. I used to think a lot. And my mother would come to me, what are you thinking about? And I realized she wouldn't even understand what I'm thinking about. But I never said anything. I started having visions when I was young. On my bed. I see something. I wake up in the morning. I see exactly what I saw in my dream. I have so many dreams. Jesus will come in my dreams. Yes, I can see the moon. I thought maybe I was brainwashed. Because my life was going in a way that was completely opposite of where. So I wondered, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I said, if there's such a thing as a purpose, and I lose it, then my life is meaningless. Let me tell you something. You were born. Your parents didn't know it was you coming. They only wanted a child. They didn't know it was Patrick. They didn't know how you were going to look like. So they had no idea. They, they had no idea who you were going to be. But it's one person who knows who you are. That same person eventually you will have to face him again. This is the only chance you get to make up your mind. When I go first to uh, talk about my testimony, I don't, I don't always say they will believe what I'm saying. It's not my business really to make you believe what I'm saying. I was only told to tell you. I had gained so much followers all around the world. But I realized there was nothing I had to give to them. Even if I give them a song, that song will fade away at some point. But I had to give them something they will stay with. Something that will keep them. That will keep them alive. Before I make up my mind, I counted my cost. I said, if I have to be poor, if I have to, be on, if I have to go on the streets, if I have to start over, I was okay with it. Only because of one reason. Because I understood who had called me. Amen. 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 Let me tell you why most people don't believe. There's a the Bible is the standard, is the truth of God. You cannot make up your own truth. And if you don't receive that word and take it serious, you will live in assumptions. So I took my Bible. I started reading the Bible. In my room. I said, God, you have to talk to me. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I want. I don't even know who I am. I 
But I believe you know. For one year I was in my room. I was praying. Sega. Days. Dimensi. Months. Amazing. And I thought somehow God would walk in the room one day. And I said, hey, my child. I'm right here. That's not what happened. As I was praying, my spirit was literally being energized. I was changing before I knew. I started really understanding things I never understood. I'll talk to myself and answer myself. And I came to realize the Holy Spirit was real. I had so many encounters in my room. At some point I knew God was real. You know, if I even told you, I saw Jesus, you won't believe it. So me telling you that I saw Jesus is not going to happen. Because even the disciples were with Jesus. They still, they still denied him. And they were with him. It's only the Holy Spirit that convinces. It's not my words. It's not my experience. My experience is only good for me. I know and I'm sure. But do you know it? Are you sure? So my life completely changed in my room. I started clearing my phone. I had one thing with my girlfriend at the time. I told my girlfriend we can't live together anymore. <laughs> she said, what? I said, we have to be married for us to, be, to live together. You know what she said? She said, that's so cute. I said, you don't understand. It's not about cuteness. I'm a different man. She was confused. She comes from a different background. We parted together. We parted together. We traveled around the world. Smoking hookah. Drinking. I used to I used to give her alcohol because I thought it was fun if I if you could only get a little tipsy. I thought it was cute. But then out of a sudden I became a pastor. She said, I don't know who you are anymore. You know what I did? I started praying for her. I prayed for her. Every day. Every night. I said, Jesus, if you revealed yourself to me, reveal yourself to her. Every night. Every day. Every night. She would sleep. She said, baby, I had a dream. She said, what kind of dream is it? She said, I saw a man. She said something that I don't understand. I said, what did, she, what did he say? He said, I told him I was thirsty. He said, uh, I'll give you the water. I said, maybe that's Jesus. He says, what? How is it Jesus? I said, don't worry. Let's just go. I went back in my room. I started praying again. I said, Jesus, yes, so give her another dream. Give her another dream. She will believe. She kept having dreams. I'm talking about Bible dreams. Let me tell you something. It's hard to talk about the gospel if you haven't experienced it. I never know how to speak like this in front of people. I'm telling you. I was even shy. As soon as I received the Holy Spirit, I came out of my body. I came out. I was preaching the gospel in Walmart. Every person that would knock on my door, I would have them saved. I became sold out. I was talking about Jesus. Only about Jesus. Let me tell you something. I don't care about anything. It doesn't matter what people say. 
I've passed that level. The reason why I came here, I want you to have the same mindset, the same fire in you. If God can do it in my heart, He can do it for you. You're not too far gone. I started praying for my wife. So I would go outside to pray at night. One day she asked me, How do you pray? I said, why don't you come and pray with me? She said, how do you pray? I said, just come. You have nothing to do So we went in the park. At, at night. I started praying. I started speaking in tongues. Can you imagine? Many speaks in tongues. Boy. She does. Kenya, Rwanda. <laughs> she started crying. She said, baby, I don't know why I'm crying. I knew the Holy Spirit was doing something. She couldn't stop crying. I was so excited in my heart. She said, God, more. More. She kept crying. She said, I don't know how I'm feeling. What is this? You know, it was a challenge because she had not, she, she had no idea. She doesn't nothing about Jesus. Zero. I told her, let's go back. Second time we went there, she had another dream. When she woke up, she said, baby, I think I want to follow Jesus. I said, what? what? You know what I did? I led her to Christ. So he picked up to me. I said, Lord Jesus, I receive you in my heart. From today, boy, that was the beginning of my life. If you come to my house, we're full of happiness, full of peace. Every relationship that's not centered in God is centered on selfishness. I'm talking to you because um, I know these things. They to me. There's an image that people have about me. But there's another image that God has. This is the one God has. What you saw before was not me. When I seemed to be happy, I was desperate. When I seemed to be happy, I was desperate. I just wanted to be, to be more famous, make more money. But every time I get to the goal, I lost the desire of those things. So don't let the devil fool you even once. He will tell you, once you get a family, once you're settled, then you can do this. It's not going to work like that. Maybe you're thinking, once I turn 45 years old, then I'll turn to God. Nothing promises that you'll be 45 years old. You know, as soon as we pass out of this body, we are more alive than we are today. It's a fact. I've experienced so many things I can't even share here. But I came to realize that God was real in my life. And I asked God, what do you want me to do? People thought I became a gospel singer. I could care less about the music. Let me tell you something. Just because you can do something, just because you're good at something, it doesn't mean you're called to do that. We are only here for one purpose. Because we didn't choose to be here, you know that. Did any one of you choose to be born? I don't think so. So somebody chose you to be here. So every time you take him out of the picture, you are left with nothing. It doesn't matter what you chase. 
does not matter. So today you might be here asking yourself so many questions. Some, some people are younger than me or a little older than me. I don't know what you're looking at when you're looking at me. But let me tell you something. I'm not the same person. I'm not the same person. The things that move me has nothing to do with my career. It has nothing to do with my music. I sing and I'll keep singing. But now I sing with a purpose. I sing with a goal. So I want you. It might be in a different industry. Maybe you are in a finance. Maybe you are in a, in a, you are an accountant. Maybe you are an engineer. Make that. Make that a tool. To reach out to people. For the gospel. And if you are not convinced about the gospel. Today. It's your day to make up your mind. Let me tell you something. It means, you know, you know the gospel, you've heard the gospel. But if it doesn't control your life, you don't believe it. That's what the Bible says. If you're not all out for the gospel, if you're not all out for the gospel, it's because you probably don't believe it. Everything that Jesus said, you probably don't believe. But you think you believe. But you don't believe. But today you can make up your mind. It can be bold for the gospel. You can wake up in your spirit. It doesn't matter what's, what, who thinks what. It doesn't matter what they say. Let me tell you something. One day, it could be at the, at the beginning, it could be in the middle, or at the end, you will find yourself alone. I'm telling you, one day, you will find yourself alone. Some of us, they are going through the season. Some of you might be going through that season right now as we're talking. Some others, maybe they're going towards that direction. Some have gone through it. But one day, you'll be alone. Then at that time, you will realize that only God mattered. Only God mattered. Let me tell you something again. I don't know what you believe about the gospel. I don't know what you believe about Jesus. You might want to go back again. And check. Because it don't mean a thing if you're just going to church to be part of a group. You could be a deacon, you can be a, a choir member. You could even be giving so much money to church. But you have to know whether you believe or not. Don't leave on assumption. Don't leave on assumption. So we're going to take the line a little bit. We're going, we're going to give the light a little bit. And if you are here, if you are here tonight, and you feel like something in your heart is changing, or you feel like something in your life is not right, or you want to change your life, what God did in my life, He can do in your life. I will personally talk to you after this. I'm not doing this so people can just enjoy the music. I want to do this to win souls for Christ. The only thing that matters to God, the only thing that matters, is the souls of men. Don't let anybody fool you. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how, how beautiful your family is. The only thing that matters is the life of God in you. 
You shall have born again. This is your chance. You know, Jesus said, No one will see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. To be born again, you just have to receive Christ in your heart. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. Your spirit is born again. Every person is born from Adam. Everybody that's not born again, they have the old self. But with that old self, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Let alone go in the kingdom of God. You can't even see it. You can't even understand it. What I'm talking about right now, some people think I'm crazy. But I'm not crazy. Believe me, I'm not crazy. I saw something they didn't see. I felt something they never felt. I know something they don't know. Believe me. Jesus was in, uh, in, in, in Israel at some point, physically. He did miracles. He cleansed the leopard. The dead were raised from the dead. But not everybody believed. So it doesn't mean that everybody here has to believe what I'm saying. One person, one person is enough. One person will make my life be satisfied. That's all I'm coming here for. So as we are singing these songs, and you feel it by the Spirit, you want to recommit your life to Christ. Or you want to receive Christ at me. You can come forth at some point. Don't think about anybody. If this is talking to your heart, don't worry about who's here tonight. They are only here tonight. You probably won't even see them tomorrow. So you can make the decision that I've made a few years ago. And you can experience what I experienced. Amen. Amen.